Welcome to this short video for long-term care preceptors on the topic of communication. This is the third video out of a five-part series for preceptor education. We will cover key topics related to communication with students during a clinical placement. Ultimately, the goal is to create a positive and empowering learning environment. As a preceptor, it is important to understand adult learning principles. Each individual learns in a different way. However, the literature has found that there are certain key principles to keep in mind when engaging the adult learner. Firstly, the adult learner learns best when the learning is relevant, focused on solving a problem, engaging, and drawing on their previous experiences. Support your student by seeking opportunities to apply what they have learned in school or through your suggested readings. For example, if your student has a key interest in wound care, pair them up with one of the nurses who has some wound dressings to complete that day. They can apply their knowledge and learn some new skills. Afterwards, follow up with your student to debrief on how the experience went. They may have further ideas to make the most of their placement and learning opportunities. You may need to adapt the experience to support the student's learning needs. Each day is an opportunity to enhance your student's knowledge and understanding of long-term care. Keep in mind your student's learning goals for the term as you arrange various learning opportunities. At the start of the day, check in with your student and plan your day together. You can do this before or after the unit rounds. Work through the day keeping an open line of communication. Be available and answer questions in a supportive manner. Check in with your student to ensure that their day is going as planned. There may be a situation during the day when an unexpected event can take place. You may or may not have time to explain the situation in the moment, but that doesn't mean that learning and explaining can't occur afterwards in a debrief to discuss the situation and the actions taken. Take time at the end of the shift to allow the student to share with you their learning that day. Discuss their positives and also their struggles. Remember, for some students, this may be the first time they've ever been in a long-term care home. Giving feedback is one of the most important aspects of communicating with your student. I'll be spending a bit of time on this slide going through these key bullets. The purpose of giving feedback is to improve your student's performance. You won't accomplish that by being harsh, critical, or offensive. Put yourself in your student's shoes and consider how you would like to receive feedback. You'll likely get much more from your student when your approach is positive and focused on improvement. It's important to provide feedback as close to the event or situation as possible. Feedback isn't about surprising someone. The sooner you provide the feedback, the more the person will be expecting it and remember the situation. Make your feedback regular. Learning is a continuous process where the student can continually add to their growth. If a student isn't aware, they may keep making the same mistake unknowingly and think it's okay. When giving feedback, prepared with specific examples. This ensures that you stick to facts and there's less room for ambiguity. Always provide feedback in private. Establish a safe place to talk where you won't be interrupted or overheard. This is the most respectful to your student. When giving feedback, use I statements. This gives feedback from your perspective and avoids labeling. Discuss no more than two issues at a time. If you provide timely and regular feedback, then it's easy to address immediate issues. If you wait and make a laundry list of improvements, it is difficult for your student to focus on key areas that need change. When giving feedback, provide specific suggestions. Make sure you both know what needs to be done to improve the situation. And this leads to our next step to always follow up. Set goals 
and make plans to monitor and evaluate progress. The whole purpose of feedback is to improve performance. We need to measure whether or not this is happening and then make adjustments as you go. And finally, one of the most important tips is to always find ways to talk about positives. Giving feedback isn't only about finding ways to improve, but also acknowledging the good work your student does. Positive feedback is always appreciated and helps to build confidence. Also, tell your student that you appreciate their efforts. Now, feedback is a two-way street. You need to know how to give it effectively and also how to receive it constructively. Ask your student regularly if there are ways that you can change or improve the learning experience for them. Through my experience as a preceptor, I have found that I have learned as much from my students as I hope they have learned from me. The only way for us to learn and grow as preceptors is to have an open mind. Giving and providing feedback has the potential to make your workplace a much more productive and harmonious environment when everyone is focused on improvement. It takes a team. There are so many individuals from different generations and from different backgrounds that support you, your student, and the residents you care for. We have such a wealth of knowledge, experience, and expertise on our teams. Providing opportunities for your colleagues to share their wealth of knowledge is a great way to highlight everyone's unique contributions. Nurses and healthcare providers need to be aware that working together in a team focused manner is the foundation for structuring positive outcomes. To support clear communication in your preceptor role, don't hesitate to refer to the RNAO Developing and Sustaining Interprofessional Healthcare and the Intraprofessional Collaborative Practice Amongst Nurses Best Practice Guidelines. All the RNAO guidelines mentioned in these videos are available for free download on the RNAO website. As a preceptor, you may have to manage or mitigate conflict. The RNAO Managing and Mitigating Conflict in Healthcare Teams Best Practice Guidelines is a great supporting resource. The numerous evidence-based recommendations within the guidelines offer direction, and resources to support you in your role. Conflict is normal and a healthy part of any workplace. We can't be expected to agree on everything at all times. Building a trusting relationship with your students and colleagues will support an environment where different opinions are valued and constructive dialogue is encouraged. So learning to manage conflict in a healthy way is crucial. When handled in a respectful and positive way, conflict provides an opportunity for growth, new perspectives, and ultimately new and better ways of doing things. Here are some great tips for managing conflict. Conflict is normal. And when it does happen, it's important to be calm. Your response to conflict can escalate or decrease the intensity of a problem. It's always important that everyone has the opportunity to voice their perspectives calmly and also actively listen to the perspectives of others. Only then will you be able to analyze the situation, identify the specific problem, and work together to solve the conflict. There is no place for blame in this situation. Everyone needs to take ownership of a problem. Whether this is a conflict between you and your student or a conflict between or with others, everyone needs to focus on the future and move past their positions and focus on finding a solution. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about finding a resolution to a problem that satisfies everyone. And sometimes that requires creativity and hard work. Be careful not to give in simply to avoid conflict or maintain harmony. Agreements reached too early usually don't last. Finally, 
always res use respectful language and maintain confidentiality. Venting to others tends to escalate the conflict and fuels a rumor mill. Managing conflict isn't always easy, but it is essential to maintaining a harmonious relationship and working environment. The best part of being a preceptor is celebrating when your students are successful. That's when you know you've both done a good job. Now, celebrations don't have to be grand gestures of fireworks from the CN Tower. They can be simple things, like a congratulations on a great job documenting a complex behavior, a cupcake for a great presentation, or a celebratory lunch on your student's last day. The most rewarding for a student is often the words of encouragement and acknowledgement. Now, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. There are four more videos in this five-part series. Feel free to review them on the RNA website and share them widely with your colleagues. Thank you.